We're getting close to Election Day, and we begin tonight with less than two weeks until that momentous day. Next week will be the last full week of campaigning, with millions of people having already cast ballots. And races are certainly tightening across the battleground map, including in places like Arizona, Georgia, and Pennsylvania, where I was in recent days. For more on all of this, CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now. Caitlin, good to be with you. Good to be with you. Welcome back. We're getting close to Election Day. Yeah, it feels like it in the air, right? It's uh, And voters are talking about it. I was in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. the World Series on everybody's mind mm-hmm. with the Philadelphia Phillies, but also yeah. Election Day. Mm-hmm. And I had the chance to talk to the retiring senator there, Pat mm-hmm. Toomey, the Republican, who was first elected in 2010, part of that Tea Party mm-hmm. wave, yeah. elected again in 2016, along with then-candidate Donald Trump, mm-hmm. decided not to run this time around. Uh, Interesting because he voted for conviction in the second Senate trial for Trump's impeachment. I had a chance to speak with Senator Toomey. Let's listen to some of that conversation. During last night's debate, Mehmet Oz talked about you. He said he had your endorsement and he talked about some of your policies. What does it mean to be a Pat Toomey voter and why might Mehmet Oz be targeting that voter in the final lap of this campaign? Oh, you know, he wants every vote he can get, right? So there, there's some, you know, I, I won two elections statewide and, and I won three general elections uh, in a congressional district here. So so obviously um, I, I had a message that was able to resonate. Um, you know, I, I think he was speaking completely truthfully. He and I have gotten to know each other and we've had a lot of discussions. Um, so, um, you know, I, I appreciated the shout out from him, but, uh, you know, he's uh, he's certainly... Looking to get every vote he can get, as he should be. But a, what's a Pat Toomey voter? Is it someone who's conservative on economic policy, but might support some measures on gun control? That seems to be a broad brush, but that could be the general profile. How do you see it? Uh, look, I, I think it's uh, it's hard to generalize. I mean, certainly uh, it is it is uh, conservatives who have uh, supported me. I am a conservative. I'm pretty much across the board conservative. Um, I think that. Um, my support for expanding background checks, which is the gun issue that uh, you're alluding to, is consistent with being a conservative. Now, that that was a controversial idea. I understand that. Uh, but I think that kind of um, independent thinking, frankly, uh, has been helpful to me. So uh, I, I, I guess someone who is uh, willing to support conservative values, a conservative set of ideas and values, someone who brings some independent thinking I think that probably uh, uh, captures a lot of my supporters. It's a little inside baseball, Caitlin, but I was so intrigued by that conversation because Pat Toomey has a different political profile in Pennsylvania Mm -hmm. than former President Donald Trump. And you Mm -hmm. heard in the debate, I was over there in Harrisburg a few days ago, Mehmet Oz appeared to be citing Pat Toomey more Mm -hmm. than he was citing Donald Trump. And what does that tell you about suburban voters and the play for them in Pennsylvania, but also across the country and states you have covered? Yeah, Bob, it was interesting listening to him because I know you and I have covered that kind of 2010 class of Republicans and kind of tracing them throughout their careers. And a lot of them are leaving Congress. And his exit has sparked this fierce battle uh, that will likely determine the balance of power in the Senate. Um, I think what's really interesting about trying to profile that voter, and that was a great question, because... um, Pennsylvania is one of those states where Republicans are not relying on the top of the ticket in that race, like they may be in Arizona, for example. Um, Doug Mastriano, the Republican candidate for governor... Most Republicans I talk to don't see that as a viable race for them to win. And so Oz has to attach himself a little bit to trying to get voters not only rev up the Republican base, but maybe try to get voters in the middle and peel off some of those voters who may be voting for Josh Shapiro, who I know you also talked to when you were in Pennsylvania. So kind of trying to to straddle that line while also, you know, reminding people about uh, his support from Trump. Um, And I think that's a delicate balance to strike. But it's interesting that um, after that debate, Oz has been very laser focused almost on driving crime as the closing message in that campaign. And Josh Shapiro, I did have a chance to chat with him in Pennsylvania. This is the Democratic gubernatorial nominee. Let's hear what he had to say. The idea that we would let Doug Mastriano be in charge of picking the secretary of state and therefore overseeing our elections when he has pledged to decertify certain voting machines and personally review the voting logs and make corrections, as he calls it, 
That's incredibly dangerous for our democracy. That undermines our freedom. And that puts Republicans and Democrats at risk. You've covered how election denying candidates are gaining traction mm -hmm. in some races across the country. Mm -hmm. Doug Mastriano has the Republican nomination in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania's gubernatorial race. Yeah. But the Trump factor, the election 2020 factor, is playing yeah. out not just in Pennsylvania, yeah. but in states like Arizona. We have a mm -hmm. new Cook rating from the Cook Political Report out today mm -hmm. that says the Senate race in that state mm -hmm. between the incumbent Democrat Mark Kelly mm -hmm. and Blake Masters, the Trump endorsed Republican, is now mm -hmm. a toss up. Uh, and yeah. well, excuse me, it is it is a toss up, correct? Yes, it is. It is a toss up. <laughs> And, yeah, hard uh, to keep track. I mean, these I know lean right, lean right, of, lean and left. all of these races are really tightening. And when you talk to Republicans this week, a lot of them sound pretty giddy about the environment because they believe that the fundamentals have kind of swung back in their favor after Dobbs has kind of settled in. Uh, they believe that a lot of that is now baked into the Democrats' uh, numbers here, and so they're starting to feel the wind at their backs because of inflation, because of the economy, but also because of these crime messages that they're blanketing the airwaves in these key battlegrounds. Arizona is fascinating because of that governor's race. And I've talked to Republicans who say that if Masters, the Republican candidate for Senate, wins, it will only be because of Carrie Lake, the Republican nominee so she's for carrying governor. Him That's what a lot of Republicans... It's a different dynamic than in Pennsylvania. Exactly. It's kind of the flip there, where um, they're hoping that her coattails are long enough to kind of take him over. Um, and there's there's been a lot of Republican criticisms about how Masters has done as a candidate. Um, and Katie Hobbs, the Democratic candidate for governor, is has been kind of, you know, has been criticized for not being perhaps as strong of a candidate to go up against Carrie Lake, um, who has been championing these election denials. Where else are you watching uh, political races play out in terms of the mm -hmm. election deniers either losing traction mm -hmm. or gaining it. Yeah, and, and I think we're, might, we may get a mixed bag. I mean, you look at a place like Pennsylvania where Republicans are, are pretty, you know, not, not, they're not at all optimistic about winning that governor's race. They're more much more optimistic about winning the Arizona race. Um, and then you look at some of these other places. I mean, I know we, our team has been tracking um, those who have been, uh, you know, echoing these false claims about the election in Congressional races, Senate races, uh, secretaries of state, um, all of these kind of elect, you know, determining elections. Um, and it, it could potentially be a mixed bag, but it is interesting that Republicans have really um, coalesced around their candidates. I think that's what we're seeing in these final days is we're starting to see Republicans come home. We're seeing that in Georgia, seeing that in Arizona. Um, and we'll see if that could be enough uh, to for them to, to overcome some of these tough Senate races. We'll see a lot of close races out there, Kate. Caitlin Huey Burns, terrific as always. Appreciate you being here. Good to see you. Thanks.